The players had escaped the prison walls. With Gregor Chernin and 17 mounted guards hot on their tail, they needed to make a plan fast. The team leapt into an unmanned supply sled, and after 25 years in prison, they were finally free. Well, kind of. They were gaining momentum in the dark, and it seemed prudent to toss the supply crates to lighten the load and thwart their pursuers at the same time. They saw the canyon too late. You probably think you know what this episode's gonna be about, and so did the players, which is why they ditched all the crates on their supply sled. I and co DM Elliot had different plans. Two days, one waterfall and a blizzard later, cold, wet, and on the verge of starvation, with no blankets or real weapons, the party began the real journey. An often underrepresented type of D&D, survival. They were still being chased by Gregor. Every hunt or rest they took brought them closer to being arrested or killed. The ranger started obsessing over trying to find a sprig of mistletoe. So, of course, he eventually found some mistletoe and cast the worst spell. Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the animated spellbook, Good Berry. Sponsored by thedeckofmany.com. You can create up to 10 berries in your hand. Any creature who uses their action to eat a berry has one HP restored, and it provides enough nourishment to sustain a creature for a day. All right, uh, so enough food and water for 10 people for the cost of one spell slot. Said sustenance is enough to rest easily and get those spell slots back. So, uh, survival solved. Yeah, I know there's cold weather DCs and stuff like that, but it's not as interesting as hunting and exploring, getting into hijinks, trying to survive. To the DMs out there, I'm gonna propose a tiny table rule. Goodberry consumes its material component. Consumed material components can't be replaced by a focus, so that means there's a set number of good berries according to how many sprigs of mistletoe the character is carrying. You don't have to do this, but we did, and to great effect. What followed was a crazy adventure where the players explored, forged, made their own clothes, and earned every inch. It became an adventure of legend. My favorite that I ever had the privilege to co-run, and it's because one tiny tweak can bring the wilderness to life. Thanks for watching the Animated Spellbook, sponsored by thedeckofmany.com. They're making cards to help DMs and players alike keep the game moving with conditions, monsters, and more for 5th edition D&D. Website in the description. I'll see you in the next Animated Spellbook. Unless you're a patron, then I'll see you in the next Animated Cake.